Right then, welcome back. Let's just kill the sound a little bit. So, um, following on from video number two, this is number three, and we are still in cruise um, on our way into Gibraltar. We're very close to the top of our descent, where we will start descending down into Jib. Um, as you see, ETA there is now working. Bottom of the screen, 1820 Zulu. Uh, it is currently 1800 Zulu. So uh, we will be wheels down on the ground in 20 minutes. So that gives you an idea how long this video will be. There or thereabouts. Um, Jib is one of the hardest approaches in the world. I certainly think uh, it is harder than Salzburg and Innsbruck in um, Austria, in the Austrian Alps. Um, possibly harder as well than the old Hong Kong airport, um, although that had challenges that you it was a bigger aircraft normally that you'd be flying into there that would make it quite tricky. Um, Jib has got C at either end of the runway um, and it's not the longest runway in the world it's, it's not too bad but we've certainly not picked the smallest nor lightest aircraft to fly in with this A320 um, I've not flown into Jib for quite a long time uh, I absolutely love the approach onto 09 um, it will be interesting whether I get it down first go, but of course we're not necessarily here for that. We're here for the navigation side of things. So let's have a bit of a look and a talk about how we are going to navigate our way into Gibraltar. Um, to do that, I need to put up my center screen. Hang on a mo. Uh, center screen, ching, right there we go. So look the chart. So here we are, um, just sort of mid south Spain at the moment. If we zoom out a little bit, gives you an idea. UK up here, uh, past just over sort of uh, Normandy way. Is that Normandy? Uh, Brest, that sort of area over the Bay of, Bay of Biscay. Um, down through Spain and here we are coming into Jib. So our last waypoint you'll see here, hopefully you can see that on the screen, is a VOR. So we know all about VORs. And from there we're going to fly south to this intersection here, which is marked by a, a triangle. No radio aid there, it is just a point in space, um, a certain distance away from the VOR. So if we actually have a look at the arrivals, show me, there we go, lovely. Uh, that takes us down to Linto, which is roughly where that triangle was. It's not the exact same, but anyway, that's where we'll be coming into, just uh, off the north coast of Morocco. We'll be swinging a very hard left into Odd Look, up to Ripra. And then from Ripra, we will be going due north, and then it gets very, very exciting. So just to quickly sort of show you that on a, another chart, we've got a couple, there's a VOR here. Bejer is, is the VOR that we fly over, and that's the one we'll primarily be using. We've got Tangier uh, in Morocco that we can use if we need it, but we shouldn't need that one at all. Um, Jib has a VOR, well it's a DME technically, uh, that will give you distance. Um, in FSX it might also act as a full VOR, I'm not too sure, but we won't be using it as a VOR. Um, we'll just be using it for distance and that will be very, very important. So we'll be doing the SRA approach, uh, so Surveillance Radar Assist, I think it stands for. Uh, however, we don't have air traffic control, so it goes completely out the window. We're flying it by hand. Is Ripra. So that's that last waypoint, and we swing north. Due north, 360 degrees. Magnetic, which is why it looks ever so slightly on the, on the cock that way. 
And this is where distance comes in. So it very, very important distance from jib. So six nautical miles, five nautical miles, and then this point they call X-ray. Uh, there is another one slightly inboard of that called uh, Yankee. That's for military. Um, we're obviously civil today. That's three nautical miles away from jib. At that point, we turn right onto a bearing of zero nine zero, um, but we're looking for the center line of the runway. No ILS here, no instrument landing system at all. So from this point, I am completely visual. The rock, the rock of Gibraltar, is this uh, sort of reddy, orangey, browny coloured area here. Um, we'll certainly be using that for reference, and I'll be doing lots of looking out of the window. Can you see this grey bit of information here? This defines where the point Ripra actually is. We've got GPS coordinates there, but they, as we know, we can't rely upon GPS. So we need another way of knowing where that position actually is. And we can see it's on a radial um, from the VOR that will be overflying. And handily, it gives us the frequency and the Morse code for that as well. But it's on a radial of 124. So when we cross that radial, because we're coming in from the sort of west-ish, but when we cross that radial, that is the point we know we will be at Ripra, and we will need to turn north. And from there, we don't really have any radio aids apart from distance. So we're using a VOR in a very different way here. We're not following a line. We're looking to just find the line, the line being the radial. And that's exactly what we'll do. We've also got some altitude constraints, some very interesting altitude constraints, 1,508 feet. Very odd, but that is, you quite often see these, you, you must be above an altitude or you must be below an altitude. This is, you have to be at that altitude exactly um, between six and five nautical miles. So that's here. If we're not at that altitude at uh, during that leg, the whole of that leg, we cannot do this approach and we will do a missed approach, in which case we'll maintain altitude, turn right over, fly the airfield, making sure we don't hit the rock uh, and climb out to 4,000 feet where we will fly straight ahead out to a waypoint called Pimos, uh, and from there we can come back round and try again, but this time from the other side. So it's going to be, uh, it's, it's an interesting one. Now, what have we got to help us navigate when we are visual? Well, we have a buoy, a floating buoy in the harbour, as it were. It's, it's not actually in the harbour, it's just out to sea. They'll be flashing yellow. We should be able to see that. Um, I do believe in the flight sim scenery. There's also a ship here, which is quite easy to spot. That's that's a nice one, but obviously ships move in real life, so we won't be using that. But we will be looking for this buoy. We need to overfly the buoy. And if we do overfly it, and we're on a heading of 090, then we must be on the center line of the runway. We have to have visual contact with the runway at this point. This is our decision point. If we cannot see the runway, we cannot do this approach from this point onwards. Sorry. Apologies, that's flight tracking. Uh, there we go, cool. So we have what's called a reference point, and we use these in D of E and so on and so forth, you know. Trig points or big building or radio mast. It's exactly the same. We do use them in aeronautics as well. Now, if we were coming in from the east and doing an easterly landing on runway 27, we have lots of these boys. We don't have a hard turn. Oh, it's, it's lovely. However, we, we're coming in on 09 because of the weather. Now, the weather is going to play quite a big role in this. And if I just pull up what the current weather is, let me just kill this screen as well. 
Uh, the weather is currently winds at 100, uh, bearing 100, 24 knots. That is bordering on too fast, actually. Um, it is certainly a lot stronger than I would like. Thankfully, it's not gusting, or at least it's not reported as being gusting. Uh, but that is a very strong wind. Now, it does mean that our landing speed will be slower, our ground speed will be slower which is good, <laughs> gives me a slight fighting chance. Um, but uh, yeah, it's not dead on the nose, so it is going to be trying to push us left as we're approaching the runway, so we'll have to bear that in mind. But that's, that's more about flying rather than navigation. So, oh, we've got another aircraft flying over the top of us. Who's that? Ansardia. Uh, anyway, okay, fantastic. So we're almost at our top of drop, top of descent, which is marked by this arrow here. And you'll see I've got Linto keyed in. And actually, if we go to the plan, zoom in a bit, let me just pull that up. Uh, there's VJF, that's the VOR that we'll be overflying. Uh, there's Linto. And then Ripra. Now Ripra, I've had to key in manually. Um, you'll see it's labelled on here, but I actually had to key in the coordinates of that. But all we're doing really is flying a heading at this point, because that this isn't a, a navigational aid at all. CF, uh, technically, that that's rubbish. That's some auto-populated thing. Um, we won't be using that at all because we'll be flying due north out of Ripra. Um, and of course we'll know we're at Ripra but because we'll be crossing that radial from VJF. You can just about see on the screen. So out of there there'll be a line drawn. That's our radial there. Okay, hope that makes sense. So... If you want to skip forwards to the point we're at VJF, um, we should be there at 18.19. It's currently 18.12, so five minutes or so. Um, feel free to skip forward. But if you like the flying side of it, then uh, we'll be doing the descent checklist in a couple of miles. Uh, and we're going pretty damn fast at the moment. Uh, what's our ground speed? 437 knots. Our air speed? 265-ish knots. Uh, and our Mac is decimal 168. So three quarters of the speed of sound. So, sound's back on. And we'll go back to our normal flight plan. The top of drop is coming up. Uh, I want my constraints on there. So in the RADNAV page, I've keyed in VJF, that is this VOR that's over here. Uh, I've keyed in the DMA, so that's the frequency for Gibraltar, but it shouldn't be a, a, a VOR, so we'll just be using that for distance, and I'll show you how that works. There's a couple of NDBs in Morocco, uh, we won't be using any of those at all, there's absolutely no requirements to use them. Descent preparation checklist. Ice. Off. Landing information. Received. Standard. Error radio. Set. Technical complete. Initiating descent. So, down we go. Radar tilt. Set. Radar tilt below. We'll do the same for the weather radar. So, that tells us where traffic is below us and the weather radar obviously for weather. We can see we've got one aircraft here below us, six, uh, 600 feet below us, uh, and in front of us, Mac 611. Mac? All signs Mac. I don't know, and apparently neither does my model matching, so no. 
Uh, and he is actually coming towards us. Yeah, we're going to cross. Well, we are invisible, so if you didn't see the first video, I'm flying online, but we're set to be invisible, so no one else can see us, uh, but we can see everyone else. Um, so we get a bit of air traffic control, just that's a little bit of flavour. Um, fortunately, we did have Madrid radar on, but uh, they've now gone offline, so we, we don't have any um, air traffic at all, mate. Um, and actually, if there were, are there any people at Jib? No. No, there's no other aircraft at Gibraltar, so there's no point in going online actually either. So we'll, we'll stay as we are. So we're on our descent then uh, towards the VOR, VJF. So if we flick the VOR onto here, and let's see what we get. Uh, VOR, please, not ADF. Thank you very much. VJF. Now, it's a VOR DME. So that's because it's got the square around the hexagon on the symbol. DME is distance measuring equipment. So we have the normal VOR, that's there, does its thing with the radials and all that goodness. Um, but we also have distance measuring equipment and that tells us how far away from it we are. So this is not calculated from GPS or anything like that. This is actually the radio itself telling us how far away we are, currently 52 miles, nautical miles. We also have Gibraltar, which is just a DME, however FSX is picking it up as a VOR as well, I'm not convinced that it is, um, that's why we've got this second arrow, but we'll be ignoring that. Uh, but it's telling us currently we're 60 miles away. Uh, I'm going to need to pull up my charts because this is one way you absolutely need to know where you are and what you're doing. So that's my charts up on that screen. Let's get that. I'm not cheating, not using any moving maps or anything like that. That's um, that would be far too cheaty. Uh, we're purely going to be doing this properly as per the radio aids we've got. Only difference is, it, it, well, it is an SRA approach which would require air traffic control to be talking you down, uh, giving you radar guidance. We don't have that luxury, so, it, um, you know, we're doing the best we can. In real life, you wouldn't be doing this at all. It, it, you would have air traffic control. So, VJF, next waypoint, 43 miles away at the moment. And it's probably going to start looking a bit dark on your screen. So, let's put the lights on for you. Personally, I don't particularly like them, but uh, we'll, we'll go with it. So, we're still flight level 290, uh, so 29,000 feet above standard pressure, which is 1013. Um, transition altitude is 6,000 feet, so once we hit 6,000 we will go over to local pressure and then we won't be talking in flight levels anymore, we'll actually be talking in altitude. I'm going to pull up the latest weather uh, for Gibraltar, LXGB, and wind, oh yes, so the wind has swung by 10 degrees. That makes all the difference to 090, so bang on the nose, and it's gone down a bit, 21 knots. Transition altitude has stayed the same. Clouds broken, 4,900 feet. Temperature still 17 degrees, we need that for the engines. And QNH 1015, so that's not changed either. Why did that just change colour? That was weird. Anyway, whatever. 
can't quite see Jib yet. Um, unfortunately, it's but down there somewhere behind these clouds. We will be seeing it soon, absolutely, because this is a visual approach. So I will have to be able to see it. Um, and we should be able to with the weather conditions that we've got. I'm going to stay on the, the moving map for the moment, but as soon as we get sort of closer towards Linto, I'll be flicking over uh, to the radio nav page, and that's where we'll be looking to pick up this radial out of VJF. Which I need to remember what the name of it is. Viger, that's it. Viger. So because we're going to overfly Viger, we will actually be crossing this radial, of course, because all radials intersect at the actual point of origin. So we will see this blue line here transition through the centre, which means we're on top of the radial, uh, and then come out the other side. Um, and the radial we're looking to pick up, of course, I've forgotten, is a radial of 124. But that will be once we've got through Linto and Repra is where that radial intersects. Uh, and when we get a bit closer in, I can zoom this in and such as well, which will give us a bit of a fighting chance. Uh, this instrument down here, this is the secondary navigation. Um, this purely just points towards whatever you've got tuned in on your VORs. So it doesn't give you the radials or anything like that. Uh, this is literally just an indicator pointing towards it, and it gives you distances as well. So we're currently 39 miles away from Jib, but that's direct. We're actually going to be flying this little loop here, uh, and we're 20 miles away from Viger. Descent's looking good. Uh, you can see this little pink dot here. I'll zoom in a bit. That is where the aircraft thinks we should be, what our altitude should be. So it's planning the descent for us, the flight computer's doing that. And our speed, it thinks, should be no more than this and no less than this. And we can see um, that we're slap bang, you know, in a good spot there. This pink diamond would be technically the ideal, you know, we're, but we're well close enough. You're, you're not likely to ever get too, too close to that without a bit of luck, and it doesn't matter. If we were going too fast, that's when we would then apply some of the speed brakes like we did yesterday in the 787, very slippy aircraft. Um, but here I've, I've keyed in some constraints, so it's given us a gentler descent. Uh, you can see the constraints in pink. So Viger, I've said I want to be, you see the minus there, at or below, flight level 160, 16,000 feet. Uh, Linto wants to be at or below flight level 100, uh, and then we've got that funny 1,508 feet in this mess that we'll, we'll see uh, once we zoom in on that. So I'm hoping we'll get, get to see the rock fairly soon. Can't quite see it. You can see Morocco over here. This is Morocco. And Jib is, of course, British. It's a British base, um, sovereign territory, but it's all Spanish around it. And, of course, the Spanish don't particularly like us having Jib. So um, there's there's quite a few constraints on where you can and can't fly, which is why we can't just fly straight in on 09, because the Spanish won't let us uh, fly through their airspace in that manner. Fair enough. <laughs> So let's flick over to the VOR just to show you what happens as we overfly Viger. Um, and quite nicely, the Airbus does plot where Viger is on a sort of pseudo moving map here. So we'll be seeing this blue line coming in towards the centre. If it's in the centre, as we know, it means we're on top of it. But we're on the radial, um, which will be true, but it will also mean we're actually on top of the VOR itself. If we're a bit lower, we would actually see the VOR on the ground. Um, it is actually modelled, but we're not going to see it from this high up. So we're well in amongst the clouds now. Thankfully the visibility isn't going to be too bad once we uh, 
get below these uh, broken clouds, and Jib is down there somewhere. So keeping an eye on this for Viger. How far away are we? 3.2 miles. Not far to go. Viger. And we will see this line come flying in. I hope. We may actually lose the signal. You tend not to get... Yeah, we lost the signal. When you're directly above a beacon, you, you just don't get the signal at all. But uh, we'll pick that up again in a moment. There we go. We picked it up and it's on the other side. So we've clearly crossed over. So let's zoom in a smidge. So we see our speed's increasing a bit here. So I am going to pull out the... Uh, Spoilers, just to stop our speed shooting up, you can see there, just about to see the spoilers out, not very much, we don't need, we don't need much, we just want to stay within, within this pink bracket on our speed here, and actually we can see our speed's falling off quite quick now, so we can probably get rid of the spoilers, yeah, the aircraft's actually warning us that we've still got the spoilers out. We don't necessarily need them. So, I'm going to allow us to get down a bit lower. The aircraft's currently controlling our height, but it won't go below what we set in here, so we need to do that. The jib yet? Not quite. It's down there somewhere. Alrighty. Looking good. So I'm just going to go to that screen. Good. And out over the water. I'm going to flick terrain on now so we get the terrain radar and we can see, see Morocco here. We can see we're over uh, the strait at the moment, over the Watara. And we'll be swinging this hard left very shortly. Which will be good because it will also uh, help us pull the speed back a smidge. So I'm just keeping looking at the chart just to keep it in my head exactly what's going on. What heading do we come out of Linto? 077. I'm going to have that on there ready to go in case I need to uh, intervene on the autopilot. So, there's flight level 100, lights on. quite cool on the Airbus because they're, they actually fold out and drop down. Looks pretty cool. But I'm quite anxious about this, doing this for you guys. I, I do enjoy this approach actually anyway, so, um, you know, it's, it's good fun, but it's, uh, it's going to be not easy at all, particularly with that wind. That's going to be really giving us uh, something to think about. 
and them in this big aircraft. And you'll see what I mean. Once you put those brakes on, you've got to be certain you're going to you're going to stop. Because if you don't, you're going to get wet. Lights on. So what were our minimums? I do believe I've not keyed that in. No, I haven't. Uh, our minimums are 908 on the radio. Uh, which is out of range, of course. Uh, which is going to be 920 on the barrow. So let me do that. And we're ready on there to activate the approach phase when we get in a bit closer. So, down we go. So now, we're coming out of Linto and we're looking for this radial of 124 out of Viger. And we can see currently it's to our left. That's good. Um, but, you know, on this sort of porky borky angle. So we're flying towards the radial. That's good. And then it's going to come in towards us as, you know, we get closer to it. Bit of relativity there for you. Um, there's our speed looking a little bit faster than I would like. I am going to put manual speed in. Maybe not quite that aggressive. But I, I do want to get our speed back. You want to be fully configured to land at jib very early. Very, very early. You don't want to be putting flaps down and gear down and doing all of this nonsense when you got all the workload of coming in on this approach um, and also it destabilizes the aircraft so you need to be what's called stable um, before you actually start the uh, the approach but again that's all sort of pilot stuff rather than nav stuff as it were um, and then when we do cross this radial we'll then be navigating on a bearing due north as it happens Approach checklist. We're going to get Approach straight checklist. on with that. Checked. Flight table. Sir, Sewed. Cabin signs. Checked. Map accuracy. Checked. Barrel Standard. Checklist complete. So we're coming up on six thousand feet. So I'm going to uh, come off standard and put in our Q and H of one zero one five. So very, very early. We're still 6,000 feet and we're, we're preparing for landing here. We need to get that speed back so we can get the flaps down. So I'm going to uh, dump the spoilers. Air brakes. And we can see our speed is, is coming back. As soon as we get to that blue dot, I can drop flaps one. So flaps one. Come on, thank you. Flaps two. It would be nice to see soon. Did I? Uh, no, we don't quite need gear just yet. I don't think. We'll do that when we're closer to Ripra, wherever that may be. We're just waiting on this radial, and this is sort of a. A good example now, we're, we're flying through this cloud, we will punch through the bottom of it fairly soon. Um, so speed's coming back nicely, once you start getting the flaps down it uh, adds quite a lot of drag to the aircraft so the speed comes off a bit quicker. When we've got a visual we can uh, relax a little bit more. So there's the bay. So we'll be flying into that. It's around here. We need to be at 1,508 feet. There's the rock. 
and the runway is there. As you can see, this is going to be uh, interesting. If you've not seen Jib before, then uh, yeah, it's good. Mm. Mm. Lovely. Tip of tea, as Biffa would say. <clears throat> so, what's the distance looking like? 27 miles, uh, sorry, 14, 14 miles to um, Jib. 27, that is from uh, Vigère. And I'm happy letting the aircraft manage the speed. So we're on dot speed at the moment. That is managed speed if there's nothing there and managed heading. Um, we're on managed altitude down to but not below 1,500 feet. Oh, we do actually have an aircraft. That jib. Just spawned on the ground. And dabby dozy. Have something to look at. So there it is. There's the rock. Oh, and there's a huge leg spike. Come on, computer, you can do it. And the runway, you might just be able to make it out, is there. The boy we're looking for is sort of round about there-ish somewhere. And there's the rock. I know, I've got good scenery. Ah, right, here comes Refra. Can we see this line here moving in? We need to start thinking about turning. Not just yet, we're not quite there. We want it to be in the middle when we get to, when we finish our turn. We've sort of got to anticipate it a bit, but not go too, too early. And that's that's purely based on feel, really, and uh, experience. We are getting there, and you can't really cut the corner here because, as we mentioned about the Spanish airspace, so you can see I've not got the reference points on here anymore. So we don't actually, uh, so I can't cheat. And because we're going nice and slow now, we don't have to anticipate this too, too early, because we can turn quite, quite sharp. That will help, that will provide a bit of drag. So I'm going to start a turn now, so we're now pretty much on that radial, just, just before it. And the weather's really giving us a hard time here. But uh, it should, should clear up. Doesn't say, oh, scattered at 500 feet. Oh gosh, so it is going to be a bit fruity. A wee bit fruity. So I can see some lights there. So actually, I think I want to be a little bit further over. I think I turned a smidge too early. This is where visual would be very handy. But as you can see, so we used a radial there to give us an idea where we were, even though we weren't actually following it. So that's a very useful pilot tool. Obviously, I can't key in 1508, so... Landing checklist. Landing view. Down the locks, three greens. Ground spoilers. Checked and armed. Hold the brakes. Medium. Yeah, we are. Let's turn over a little bit. Go around altitude. Set. Landing memo. We need to go around Checks the harbour here. Okay. Yeah, we turned a bit, a bit too early. That's all right. We can... Uh, Get away with it. I know this approach, so although that's <laughs> it's no good knowing it if you can't see it. Can I pet? Now would be a really bad time to jump on my lap because I'm going to be kicking this rudder quite hard. Cap. Yeah, we can see the wind's really pushing us over here, so we're going to have to turn even more in just to avoid the land. We've got to avoid that harbour. That's actually on the chart, you've got to avoid it. 
Hello. All right, then, troops. <laughs> wish, wish me luck. <laughs> so, right now we can swing around. So I would. We're supposed to be going due north here, but that is a very strong wind. So we're going to have to um, point into the wind a smidge. Five, five and a half miles. Remember that point X-ray is at three miles. We must have visual with the runway at that point. And I think we will do, actually. Yeah, I can see the runway now. One thousand. Right there. Hundred above. You can just see the lights in a line there. That's all we need. So we're looking for three miles. Four point eight, four point seven. It's also on here as well. So manual flight. That's the runway. You don't want to turn too early on this. It's very tempting to turn too early. Look at the charts. Three miles we want to be. We're a little bit far over. The wind's really pushing us over. Can we see the boy? Flashy flash. We need to overfly that boy. And we can see the runway lights now, actually. We are, are a bit low. Uh, okay, so, auto brake medium. Speed brakes are on, yeah, we're all good to land. So, this wind is really, really helping us out. So what I'm looking for is I want this boy to be in a direct straight line with the runway because that means we're on the center line. And I've just turned a smidge too late there. That's okay, we've got distance and the wind is pushing us backwards. So we've got wind actually assisting us now. Now we're flying into it. There's the rock. Pretty much committed to landing, but we could go around. It would be perfectly safe to go around still. Approaching zero so nine. this is looking okay, but you can see how short the runway is. And it's all C before it, and it's C immediately after it. Oh, you want joystick help? Um, um. No, joystick cam is not playing. So, bit of rudder. 300. Just to get us round that corner. There we go. So we see the sea comes right over. We're pretty much Ooh. over the top of that boy. Just gone past it. Smidge high, but we're all right. 100. 70. A smidge high. 50. 30. 20, retard, retard. Oh, thrust to idle. Bounced it. Reverse free. And because I bounced it, I'm going full reverse, or medium reverse. Three, There's the road. Remaining. Yes, there is a main road that goes straight across the runway. Oh, we've got a couple of guys here. And we'll stamp on the anchors just to get around this corner. Oh, and they're taking all the gates. Are we going to fit in there? I don't think we will. Okay, so spoilers away, flaps up. Yeah, I don't think we will fit in there. Check retracted. Check normal. The APU one, yes, Check it is. Retracted. Decast. Check standby. Raise temperature. Checked. APU. On. Check this 
So that was a heavy landing. It, it was perfectly okay. Below sort of 250 feet per minute. Um, I hope the pop-up worked. Uh, as long as you're below 250, you're pretty much all right. That's not here, unfortunately. Not many people do that approach. They always come in the other way because uh, it's it's a very tricky approach, as I say. Uh, so taxi light can come off. Turn off lights can come off. And we'll put the anchors on. Right, there's probably. No, not quite. Just to satisfy anyone with OC. Uh, uh, uh. All right, then just slew over to me. Brilliant. Really good. So that's us down on the deck. Uh, wrong button. Parking brake. Engines away. What have we done? So, checklist. Oh, we'll let him do his thing. Parking brake and shocks. Shocks are set. Parking brakes released. Seatbelt signs. Set off. Beacon light. Set off. Exterior lights. Set off. Anti ice. Off. Set off. So we've done VORs. Um, we knew where we were flying over Vigier because it dropped out and then did a spinner thing. And then we flew on a magnetic heading out, out of. Uh, the intersection, I forget the name of it, began with an L, and we were flying looking for a radial back out of the VOR of Vigere, 124 degrees, and when we crossed that, we went back out onto a magnetic heading, we should have been on 360 um, for our track, so that's the line we wanted to fly, uh, but of course the wind was seriously strong. And what I can do is sort of show you what that looked like on the moving map, which I had uh, minimized. So let's just pull that up on plan G. So there was Vigere. We overflew that. We know that. Into Linto, that was it. And because it was a hard turn, we started the turn early. Flew on the heading out of Linto. And then we were looking for this 124 radial and then turn north. And actually, you saw that we were, you know, flying at 10, 35 almost degrees off north, and we were still going off to the side. So that's how much the wind does factor in there. Um, so you can see it was really, really pushing us hard. Sorry, the resolution on this is rubbish. So if we show now a radial of 124 out of Vigere, oh, look at that. So there's your verification that this works, and I'm not just chatting a load of nonsense. That we keyed that in, we were looking for it on the radio, we had no moving map or anything, remember, in, in, in the cockpit. We were purely looking for that blue line moving and going across. Um, left it a smidge late, uh, that was semi-deliberate because I knew the wind was going to be pushing us over anyway, however it pushed us over a lot more than I uh, accounted for, and we actually overflow almost overflew the harbour here. Um, but but we were all right. We corrected for it, um, and then round and here. You, I don't know why the resolution on this is absolutely rubbish, um, but you can see where we slightly overshot the runway, but then we came back in, and you know it wasn't the worst landing in the world. I've certainly done better. I've done a lot worse at jib. I've done considerably worse at jib. Um, still had just shy of two tons of fuel left, so we had plenty to do a go around. Uh, if we were going to do a go around, we've had to fly out to Pimos, uh, which is this over here, which is a, actually a really long way, and then we would have come back in through Bravo and up 
through this way it makes this turn quite tight actually um so it was good that we didn't have to do a go around there we go as per usual any questions comments uh down below in the in the doobly-doo um and you know ask ask anything i'll try and reply promptly or if you've got a suggestion if my audio is not quite set up right or, or whatever you know let me know so i can fix it for the next video next video we won't be in an airliner i promise we'll be in a light aircraft and we'll actually be using uh these vors and ndbs to do some cross-country style navigation so we will not have a gps at all but we won't have an autopilot or at least not certainly not a good one um and we'll we'll get smashed in with the sort of stuff you can do in an aircraft you're possibly a little bit more familiar with mm. but until then thanks for watching cheers